What is that? That looks disgusting. Okay, most of you know what these are. The dreaded hairballs. Although, they're not really balls. They're more like sausages. When I was growing up with cats, vomiting hairballs was something they regularly did and nobody gave it a second thought. But it can be a sign of health issues. And in very rare cases, hairballs can be fatal to your cat. At least one of my cats is having hairball issues. Time to find out more about what that really means and what you can do about it. Coming up. My name is Francisco, and on this channel, we try to improve the lives of your indoor cats with the help of my three cats, Calypso, Mr. Muffin, and Skyfall. For you new cat owners, if you see your cat coughing, retching, hacking, it just might be trying to cough up, or vomit really, a hairball. Or you might find them around your house. They'll be long, they'll be wet, and upon close inspection, it will be clear they are made of cat hair. Their medical name is Trichobezor. I don't know how they come up with these names. Are they something to worry about? Probably not if they happen infrequently, but they should not be ignored either. There are things you can do. More about that in a moment. But first, what causes them? Hairballs are created when cats swallow too much hair. Their digestive system is made to handle a certain amount of hair, but if there's too much, it can't handle it, it builds up in their stomachs, and eventually they vomit it out. If you are unlucky, it might get jammed, and then it'll require some kind of medical intervention. But that's not the whole story. There's a reason why your cat is swallowing so much hair. Vets don't agree on what a normal amount of hairballs is. But some vets have pointed out that uh, studies of feral cats have shown that in the wild, cats do not vomit nearly as many hairballs as indoor cats. But there is not in a lot of agreement on why that is the case. They do agree, however, that vomiting too many hairballs is not good for your cat. I have seen a wide variety of numbers on what is a normal amount of hairballs for a cat, ranging from every week or two to once or twice a year. So that's not very helpful. Regardless of how normal it is, if your cat is throwing up hairballs, it's probably because it is swallowing too much hair. And the most likely cause of that is over-grooming. So what are some of the causes of over-grooming? Number one, anxiety. Anxious cats groom to soothe themselves, although they also have other problems beyond hairballs. Number two, it could be that they are in pain. Apparently, grooming releases serotonin in cats, and it's some kind of pain relief. Number three, some kind of food sensitivity. Number four, possibly a food allergy. Number five, fleas. Number six, some kind of skin condition. And I'm going to add one to the list, which is boredom. Now, I'm not a vet, but I believe that boredom is the primary cause of overgrooming in otherwise healthy indoor cats. Why? Because they have nothing else to do. This channel is all about indoor cats, but I'm also aware that by keeping our cats indoors to protect them, we also deprive them of the natural stimulation they have outdoors. And so they become super bored. And one of the ways that they deal with that is grooming themselves. Now, your problem could be amplified if your cat has long hair, if it's a fastidious groomer, if it grooms another cat that had, does have long hair, or if it's springtime and the warm weather is causing it to shed. It's springtime now, and I think it's Mr. Muffin that is uh, throwing up most of these hairballs because he has long hair, he has a heavy undercoat, and the hairballs that I see are gray. So what can I do about Mr. Muffin this spring? And what can you do to avoid this problem? The best solution, if your cat has a healthy coat, is regular brushing. Now, I have to admit, I have not been doing that with Mr. Muffin because he doesn't like it and always puts up a big struggle. But they can be trained to tolerate the brushing. More on brushing in a minute, but first, some other possible remedies. The pet food industry makes specialized cat food to alleviate hairballs. Mostly, it has extra fiber to apparently help food and move more quickly through their digestive system along with the hair. In addition, they make cat laxatives that come in a jelly and that you put it in with your cat's food. And apparently it's supposed to, I think, grease their system and help again the cat, the cat hair move through their system. But there are vets that consider these last two remedies ineffective. 
To quote a discussion on the website of the Cats Only Veterinary Hospital in uh, Norristown, Pennsylvania, imagine if you went to the doctor for vomiting and they advised you to eat petroleum jelly two to three times a day. A little bit of snark there. Full link to the article is below. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of data to go on regarding these solutions. And again, another quote this time from the website of the Medical Library of Science. Although a range of commercial hairball control diets are available, there is no objective information in the public domain regarding their efficacy. Again, the link is below. Now, I have not tried any of these products, so I can't do a review on them. But if you have tried some of these products, I would love to hear your experience in the comments below. In either case, you should not change your cat to high fiber diet or try laxatives without first consulting your vet. Another couple of suggestions are making sure your cat is drinking enough, which is always a good idea, and serving at smaller meals so that food moves more regularly through their digestive system, carrying the cat hair along with it. The most important, however, is trying to get to the basic cause of overgrooming, whether it's anxiety, pain, or boredom. As I have mentioned, in otherwise healthy cats, I think boredom is the primary cause of overgrooming. I have a video on easy ways to play with your cat, which I will link to above right here. But back to brushing, if your cat has a healthy coat, you need to brush them regularly, especially in the spring when they are shedding. Out in the wild, they rub up against bark, they go through bushes, they get into brambles. All this pulls uh, loose hair from them. But indoors, all our furniture is smooth or it's soft. They don't have those kinds of things, and so we have to help them with brushing. Try to get a brush that's not too hard and not too soft. If it's too soft, it won't do anything. If it's too hard, they'll run away from you. They also make specialized dematting combs. I have one of these, and I have tried it out in Mr. Muffin. It takes out an amazing amount of hair, but the downside is he doesn't really like it, probably because it pulls, so it has to be used uh, carefully and gently. Now, if your cat has a poor or thin coat, brushing them more is not the answer. There might be allergies, there might be food sensitivities, there might be skin problems, anxiety, other issues that you should consult with your vet. Now, in the most serious cases, what are the signs that your cat might have a hairball obstruction in its digestive system? Here's the list. Number one, ongoing vomiting, gagging, retching without actually producing a hairball. Number two, Lethargy. Number three, not eating. Number four, diarrhea. And number five, constipation. If your uh, cat has these symptoms, take it to the vet right away. They might have to do blood work or take x-rays. Uh, and if non-invasive procedures like laxatives do not work, it might require surgery. Fortunately, that is rarely the case. And my cats are not having any of those symptoms. If you thought this video was useful, please press like so that other people can find it more easily. Now, unfortunately, I have to go clean up something disgusting.